Well, welcome everybody. Thank you for joining us this afternoon to this session called Understanding Google Workspace for Education Plus. This is the first of five sessions we'll be running uh, and we put these on particularly for all the schools within uh, both CENET and Northern Archdiocese Catholic Schools. Uh, so what we generally refer to as the East Coast Catholics, um, it's all the Catholic dioceses up and down the, the East Coast of Australia uh, from the tip of Queensland all the way down to the bottom of uh, Victoria uh, and Tassie of course. Uh, so, um, my name is Chris Betcher. I'm on the Google for Education team. Um, I'm joined by my colleague, Bettina Pfeiffer. Uh, this is, Bettina's just down there. Um, and we're going to take you through uh, a couple of things. And the point of these today is to help you understand better the features of Workspace Plus. Um, so we know a lot of you have been using Google for a long time, um, but with um, recent purchase of Plus by many of the dioceses around the country, uh, you've got some additional features that you didn't have before. So we just want to make sure you're aware of what they are and how to get value from them. Um, just before we kick off, <laughs> pardon me, um, just like to recognise the traditional owners of the lands upon which we're meeting today, uh, whose customs and cultures have nurtured and continue to culture this land we live on. And we honour the presence of the ancestors who reside in the imagination of this land. Um, the Google for Education team is a small but mighty team. You can see us all there on the screen. Um, we uh, spread out across Australia and also over in New Zealand. Um, and so uh, when, you, when you need something uh, Google-wise, uh, we're the folk that you can reach out to. Um, and we always like to try and be helpful. Uh, like I said, this is part of a series of webinars that we're running. So today we're talking about Engage from Anywhere and we'll primarily be talking about Google Meet. Uh, and we'll, we'll unpack that for you as we go along. Um, next week, I've got one of our security experts, Richard Johnson, will be talking about some of the advanced security stuff. It's probably more aimed at the admins and uh, system leader type people, more so than the classroom teachers, but anyone is welcome to attend. Um, November 8th, I'll be looking at guiding deeper learning, and we'll be looking at some of the new features in Google Classroom um, in the Plus editions. Uh, November 16, again, probably more for the admin type people, we'll be looking at how you can utilize the data that's coming out of Google Workspace to make um, uh, more insightful decisions about uh, teaching and learning. And then finally, in the last session on November 22, I've just called it Work Smarter. <laughs> and in that, I plan to go through and just pull out all the little bits and pieces of plus features that appear all through Workspace, um, both in Docs and Calendar and Gmail and all. It's, it's scattered right throughout the whole suite, and we'll be looking at that in the last session. Um, and as I said, these are uh, custom put on for uh, just all the schools within the CENET um, family of dioceses and also the Melbourne Archdiocese Catholic Schools diocese as well. All right, so let's talk about Google Meet. So I know that um, from my experience with most of the dioceses around the country, uh, you guys have been um, uh, pretty much using uh, Zoom pretty consistently. Uh, that's uh, at the start of the pandemic particularly, uh, that became the sort of the the, the go-to tool for teaching and learning in a remote situation. Um, since then, <coughs> many of the dioceses around the country have purchased uh, Google Workspace Plus, which is the paid edition of Workspace. And I'll explain a little bit more about that in just a sec. Uh, but what that does mean is it gives you access to Google Meet as part of Workspace Plus. Uh, now, I don't, I don't, I'm not in a position to make any decisions about which you choose to continue to use, whether you continue to use Zoom or whether you use Meet. Uh, I just want to point out to you the features of Meet so you can make an intelligent decision about what you're going to use. Uh, I would guess that probably a lot of the stuff that you needed Zoom for, Meet now does as well. So you might want to think about whether you continue to use one over the other. Entirely your decision, of course. Um, the thing about Meet, uh, we like to say it's easy to use, it's secure and reliable, and it's engaging and inclusive. And I'm going to unpack Meet in those three buckets. So we'll talk about the ease of use stuff. We'll talk about the security and reliability stuff. And finally, the, the biggest bucket of all is the engaging <laughs> and inclusive stuff. And for those that came in late, I do apologize for my cough. I, I, it, it's just one of those nagging things that won't go away. Um, and it sounds worse than it really is. Um, so uh, just in terms of that first section there, the ease of use stuff, um, it, Meet is super easy to use. Uh, unlike a lot of other video conferencing platforms, you don't have to install anything, runs entirely in the browser which means you can connect from anywhere on pretty much any device. It's really good in low bandwidth. So if your internet connection is not great, it's particularly good at that. Um, it integrates really seamlessly with the rest of Workspace, and we'll talk a bit about that as well. Single sign-on, so once you're signed in with your Google account, you sign in to Meet, 
Um, so there's no second uh, sign-in required. It's, I think it's really intuitive with a very simple interface and the video quality is fairly high quality and um, hopefully you can see me okay and I look all right. Um, and the other thing is it lets you manage classes more easily because it has a whole bunch of um, sort of very intelligent features in the background, which again, we will talk about as we go along. In terms of the security and reliability piece, um, you know, it's part of Google Workspace. So it comes with that 99.9% .9 guaranteed uptime uh, that we, we, we guarantee. <coughs> as part of workspace it has a whole bunch of moderator controls uh, for those of you that might have looked at meet at the start of the the whole pandemic thing a couple of years ago um, it, I will quite openly admit we did not have a lot of the moderator controls we should have had at the time but we do now uh, and I think it's uh, it's very very good the way we've got it set up now in terms of moderation um, admin policies, visibility, uh, the back end uh, administrators can do a lot of stuff behind the scenes in terms of policies and the way they set it up. And of course, it's fully compliant with all the regular rule uh, laws and stuff that uh, govern the way students and people in general use technology. <coughs> and then finally, um, the uh, engaging and inclusive part of it, you know, uh, we've got um, hand raising, digital whiteboarding, polls, Q and A's, breakout rooms, all of that sort of stuff now is, is part of Meet. Uh, and we'll, again, we'll talk about some of that, including some really clever things like the live streaming, the auto transcription, uh, the recording facilities, the stuff it does automatically with the recordings afterwards. Uh, and so that's that. So um, I mentioned that Meet integrates with Workspace. So it does it in several ways. One of us, there's a direct integration with Meet inside Google Classroom. So if you're a Google Classroom user, uh, there's some really clever things that Meet does in terms of um, Classroom. So for example, inside Google Classroom, you, with one button press, you can enable Meet as the video conferencing tool within Classroom. And it does some clever things like, for example, a student can't go into a Meet via Classroom unless the teacher is there and they can't stay in the meet at the end of the lesson once the teacher leaves. So with one button click, a student can, you can be sure that a student can't be um, unsupervised in a video call uh, without the teacher there. It's just not the way it works. Um, after a call, the meet automatically goes into your drive. If you've asked for transcriptions or recordings, that get saved automatically in drive, you don't have to do anything. Uh, in terms of integrating with your calendar, uh, when you set up a meet call, it automatically drops something into your calendar. So the link is right there. Uh, I'm sure some of you from today probably joined this from a calendar link as well. <coughs> um, it's built right into Gmail and chat. Uh, so if you're in, in uh, Gmail or in a chat, the, the meet button is right there. And we've now got the ability to also bring the meet call into Google Docs, Sheets or Slides. Um, so you used to have to, when you were in a video call with someone working on something collaboratively, you very often had to have the video call open in one window and the document open in another. You can, in fact, now bring the video call directly into the document. So you have one window with everything in it. So some quite clever stuff going on. Um, so basically, it's all about having more choice, more control, more flexibility to, to meet the needs of the school. Now, I mentioned this is the plus edition. So just for anyone who's not sure, and again, unless you're paying the bills, this is probably not directly relevant to you, but there is a free version of Google Workspace, which has always been available. It's called Workspace for Education Fundamentals. It's it's the one that probably most schools have been using for a very long time. Um, over the last couple of years, a lot of schools have said to us, look, we'd like some more enterprise level features. We'd like some additional things. Um, and unfortunately, a lot of those things, we, we just can't provide at no cost. Um, so while we still offer the fundamentals version, also offer three other editions of Workspace that have additional features and, and those are paid editions. Now, a lot of the Catholic dioceses around the country and many of the ones that you're in um, have chosen to move on to those paid editions. So for I think most people in this room, you probably now have access to Google Workspace for Education Plus. So you get all these additional features that you did not get in the Fundamentals edition. And again, that's the purpose of these webinars is to help you unpack the stuff that you've now got that you didn't have before so you understand what you've got. So let's take a little product tour. So let's have a little look through uh, some of the different things you've got. So all the stuff in green is all the things you've always had. And again, this is just with Google Meet we're talking about today. So all of the stuff in green is available in the free fundamentals edition of Workspace. 
The stuff down here in the blue section down the bottom here, this is the stuff that is in addition that you now have as part of the paid plus additions. So things like being able to record, having attendance reports. Um, some of you might be saying, but hang on a second, I've used Meet before and we could record before and we had the free edition. That was because Google um, decided to, just as a way of trying to help people out through the pandemic, we made the recording feature available to people, even in the plus edition. Technically, it wasn't part of that edition, but we felt it would be a help thing for people, so we enabled the recordings. Um, that's now been wound back, and so the recordings are now only in the plus edition. Um, you get attendance reports, intelligent noise cancellation, um, dial in using a local number. Uh, you can end any meeting in your domain from the back end administrator panel um, and take a whole bunch of security actions on things that are happening in the background. Probably, uh, if you're if you're a classroom teacher, this stuff's probably not relevant to you, but it's still incredibly important. Um, and the sort of the more user facing stuff, breakout rooms, polls, Q and A's, larger meetings. Uh, you can do live streaming, live transcripts, and live translated captions. And we'll talk about those. So all that stuff in the bottom there is all the stuff you're now getting in addition to what you've always always had. Um, now, I probably won't spend a lot of time unpacking the free edition stuff because you might already be familiar with it. However, I also understand a lot of you probably have been using Zoom in the past, so maybe this stuff is new to you. So I will try and unpack some of the free stuff, but concentrate on the paid stuff. So um, just in terms of fundamentals, and again, I'm, I'm breaking it down into those three buckets, the easy to use, the secure and reliable, and the engaging um, and inclusive parts. So this is the ease of use stuff. So Meet is, is super easy to use. You're in it now, obviously. Um, if you look down the bottom of your screen, uh, you'll see there's some buttons there. There's a microphone, um, there's a uh, uh, little camera button where you can turn your microphone on or off or your camera on and off. Um, the little button that says CC uh, down the bottom, if you uh, click on that, you'll see it will open up some closed captioning. And if you click that button, it will actually start taking my voice and transcribing the words that I'm saying uh, so you've basically got closed captions under the video. Um, that, I think, is a really useful feature, and it's turned on on a per-user basis. So if you don't want to see it, you turn it off. If you do want to see it, you turn it on. Um, so that's closed captioning. I'm just going to turn mine off, not that you will see it. Um, there's a little hand-raising feature. Can you all put your hand up for me? So I know you found that button. Excellent. Look at all those hands up. Okay, you can put your hands down now. Intelligently, the hand raising eye, uh, the thing. So, if, uh, for example, Michael there put his hand up. If um, if Michael put his hand up, and then I call on Michael to speak and say what he was, whatever he needed to say, uh, the system will intelligently realise that Michael is now speaking and automatically put the hand down for him as well. So, there's some intelligent stuff happening in the background. Um, there's a low light mode as well. <coughs> so, if you're in a situation where your lighting is not great, Meet does some very clever AI type stuff to try and make your video look as good as it possibly can. Um, it works really well with optimizing for low bandwidth, minimizing the data use. Uh, it uses a surprisingly small amount of bandwidth um, for multiple user video calls. Uh, and you get an optimized experience on Chromebooks as well. So that's some of the sort of the fundamentals featurey stuff there. Um, some of the paid features you get, you get the recordings. So we are recording currently. You can see if you look up into the top left hand corner, there should be a red button there that says recording. Um, and so uh, when we finish this, this session today, I will hit the stop recording button. And it usually takes about five to 10 minutes. That recording will then appear in my Google Drive in a folder called Meet Recordings. It's as simple as that. So I don't have to do anything special, it just magically appears. Um, I also get an attendance report. So it will tell me everyone who attended the meeting today, uh, when you joined, when you left, if you left and came back, it will tell me when you did that. Um, it will tell me how long you are in the call for. Obviously, really <laughs> useful stuff when you're um, running meetings with kids because you know who was there. Uh, one of the things that's less easy to see, um, but you certainly know when it's not there, and that is the intelligent noise cancellation. Uh, I live on a fairly busy road here, and I have a lot of buses and trucks going past sometimes. Um, and you would not know because it intelligently cancels out all of that noise. Um, uh, we've done a couple of experiments here with trying to play a musical instrument and uh, with the noise cancelling on, and it literally just cancels the, the instrument out. You can't hear it at all. Um, so it's very, very good. And if you are not able to join on a computer, if you want to dial into a meeting 
Um, on the plus edition, you get a local Australian number. So you can just dial into a, to a local 02 or whatever number is in your region. Okay, so those are the paid edition features there. Uh, we did talk about some of these things. Oh, that's right, I've got a slide for each of these. I forgot about that. <laughs> um, the, the flexible views thing is an interesting one as well. And that is, I know uh, with, with some other platforms like Zoom and I've used Teams and I've used Skype and a few other things, like you get a very fixed layout and like it always looks like that. If you were to, uh, if you want to try this experiment, you can. In the browser window that you're currently looking, if you were to resize your browser window, you'll notice that the all the little video tiles will move around the screen and they'll adjust to whatever size screen you've got. Um, you can move things around, you can make it into a, a skinny panel, you can make it into a skinny vertical panel, uh, and it will intelligently sort itself out. You might also notice that um, if you hover over anyone's video, so mine, for example, if you hover over my video, you'll see a little panel will appear um, with a couple of icons on them, and one of them looks like a little push pin. Uh, if you click on the push pin, it will actually attach that video to uh, the big part of the screen, and so you can have both the slides and the speaker big. Now that's really useful if you want to do things like um, pin, you know, the teacher next to the next to the uh, presentation, or you might have a sign language interpreter, or for whatever reason you want certain people to be pinned up into the main area, so you can choose to do that. Uh, and if you just change your mind, you can unpin them and they go back into the panel at the bottom of the screen again. Um, talked about the, invis the visibility. Uh, we talked about the low light bandwidth stuff and uh, the improved performance on Chromebooks. And I am getting lots of thunder and lightning right now. Hopefully you can't even hear that because of the noise cancellation. Um, but yeah, it's really coming down out there. Um, I mentioned the uh, the global dialing and so on. So that's a whole bunch of features that make Meet easy to use. Let's just talk about the security and reliability stuff again. Uh, this is sort of the second thing, that secure, reliable piece. So I think you'll find that uh, Meet is incredibly reliable. Like it just, it's rock solid. It very rarely falls over, very rarely fails. Um, the video stream is really smooth pretty much all the time. It rarely stutters. Um, so it, it's great like that. You can also do a lot of things like preventing unwanted guests from joining the meeting. Uh, we can kick people out. I can end the meeting for everyone and just kick everyone out at the end of the meeting, which obviously in a school situation is useful. Um, if I wanted to block users from chat, I'll give you an example of this. If you, um, uh, over in the <coughs> right-hand lower corner of the screen, you'll see some icons. One of them looks like a little speech bubble. That's the chat. Can everyone just go into the chat and just type something, just say hi or something in there, just into the chat. Okay, so Simone says hi, hi Simone. Oh, Simon, sorry, Simon. Um, Aaron says hi. So everyone's saying hi. So you're all chatting in the chat pod there, right? So one of the things I could do, and I'm just gonna pop into my little control panel here, and I'm just gonna turn that off. And now you'll find that your ability to enter anything into that chat panel has suddenly disappeared. And so you can no longer enter the chat, correct? Okay, I won't do that to you because I trust you all, so I'll turn your chat back on. But I do have that control. I can, I can. Uh, if, if you look at the bottom of the screen, you notice there's a little button, your microphone button, which for most of you is turned off at the moment. If I flick my little switch here to do that, your microphone button is now grayed out, correct? So you couldn't, you couldn't click it if you wanted to. So I can turn that off. I could turn off your ability to share the screen. So there's a little blue button at the bottom of the screen there with like a square with an arrow pointing up. That's the share screen button. If I click this switch, you now no longer have the ability to share your screen. That button gets grayed out. And so I have a lot of back end control I've got here in terms of what I'm allowing people to do and not allowing them to do. Now, those are not plus features. They're just available in the regular version of Meet, but they're important to know that they're there because they give you that control over what's happening in your classroom. So you can mute people, you can you can make people hosts. Uh, some of you saw me make Bettina a host before, so she can help out with um, some of the, the, the admin functions we're doing here. Um, you get a lot of control over who can access meetings at the group at the group level, the OU level. Uh, this is getting to administrator stuff, but um, there's a lot of control there. If, for example, there was a meeting that someone didn't shut down 
and and this happened a little bit in the early part of you know when we went to remote learning teachers would start video meetings and forget to sort of close them down and students would realize they were there and students would be having these sort of you know illicit meetings that they weren't supposed to be having in this call that was never shut down properly um, you can now end any meeting in your domain uh, with administrator functions now so the admin can go in there do a search find any uh, meeting that's still running using what's called the investigation tool and just automatically shut meetings down so there's a whole lot of back-end security stuff now that you get with the plus edition sounds boring but it's kind of important stuff that you can do that um, the other thing you can do is use that investigation tool to do a whole bunch of investigation on security and privacy threats Again, it's not the sexy, exciting stuff, but it's really important stuff in terms of managing these tools within a school situation. All right, let's have a look at the um, uh, the sort of the more user-facing stuff. So um, again, the, the fundamentals, the free edition comes with a whole bunch of really nice things like the tile view. Um, if you, I don't know how many you can see, so do this for me, guys. Next to the hang up button, so there's a red hang up button at the bottom of the screen. Don't press that one because that'll hang you up, right? But click on the three dots and go up to where it says uh, change layout. And you'll see you have a number of layouts to choose from there. You've got auto, tile, spotlight, sidebar. So there's a few different ways you can lay it out. But down the bottom of the screen, there's a slider, and you can slide the slider across to show how many other video windows you'd like to see. Now, I've got mine set to the maximum right now, which is 49. So I can have up to 49 people on my screen at once. In a um, classroom situation, most of us teach in classrooms where we have 25, 30 kids in a class, you probably need at least that if you're gonna do a remote lesson. Fingers crossed we don't have to do too many more remote lessons, but it's nice to know that you do have enough video tiles there to see all the students if you need to. Um, in terms of how many people you can have in a meeting, uh, you can have 250 people in a meet call uh, in, the, in the free edition and 500 people in the paid edition. And there are indications that that number is probably going to go higher in the future. Um, we'll, let's just talk about the digital whiteboarding. So uh, if I just show you here, so we have a tool called Jamboard. Some of you are probably familiar with it. Um, it's a digital whiteboarding tool and it's built right here into Meet. So for example, I could, let's do this, I might actually do that. I'm gonna open a Jam right now, start a new whiteboard and click on my little button there. Okay, there you go. And uh, I'm going to give everyone editing permission and share. So I'm just going to share that with you. Okay, I think that's right. Share anyway. I think I've pressed the button twice. Um, so you should see. Did you get to get a pop up telling you about a meet uh, uh, a Jamboard that just opened up? I've opened two of them. I didn't mean to open two of them. Clicked it twice. I was impatient. Uh, there. Okay. If you uh, if you guys look in the um, where am I? Um, too many things going on now. Um, if you look over in the, down in the lower right-hand corner of the screen, you've got an icon that looks like a little triangle, square, and circle. If you hover over, it says uh, activities. And if you open up that activities panel, you'll see a thing that says whiteboarding. And if you go in there, you should see there are two whiteboards. I, I created two by mistake. So just pick the top one. I'm hoping, is it the same one? Oh, it is the same one, yeah. So if you go into that one, we should be, there you go, so I can see a few people are in there now. So I've just created that whiteboard in there. So I can see Bruce has joined, and I can see Karen in there, and I can see Narena in there. And so that uh, that digital whiteboard, uh, and I don't know if you've ever used Jamboard or not before, but there are some tools over on the left-hand side. There is a sticky note tool where you can put sticky notes, just like someone's put one that says hi. 
and there's also pens there so you can take the pen and you can draw and write a tic-tac-toe or whatever you'd like to do so so that whiteboarding is built right into um, to meet as well through the Jamboard tool okay, I see someone is drawing there I'm not sure who that is who was that that was Cheryl was drawing there so that's an example of one of the tools that's sort of built straight into uh, into Google Meet. <laughs> it's a lovely drawing, Cheryl. I like it. Okay, um, so that's built in. Uh, just carrying on with our slides. Um, we talked about the closed captions before, uh, how you can click that CC button at the bottom of the screen and see the closed captions. Um, that operates in several languages, uh, English, French, German, Portuguese, Spanish. Um, we are also moving to, uh, where are we here? Um, oh, sorry, it's a different feature. Um, so that's the closed captioning. Again, that's a, that's a fundamental feature. That's, you don't need the plus edition for that, but it's good to know that it's there. We've got the custom backgrounds. You can see behind me at the moment, I'm sitting in this uh, office space here. I'm actually moving house this weekend and my room is a mess. There are boxes everywhere. I didn't want you to see that. So I've just put a virtual background in. Um, one of the improvements that's happened uh, recently is the algorithm that works out cutting me out. So the outline around me here to put in the virtual background, uh, they changed the algorithm recently to make it much better. So even though I don't have a green screen behind me, I've just got a regular room behind me, uh, the outline, the outlining around people now is actually uh, really good. Um, coming soon, this is not in Meet yet, but coming very soon, we have the ability to just put um, in meeting reactions using emojis. We want to know how much students love their emojis. Um, now, uh, breakout rooms. Let's just try a little breakout room experiment. I'm just going to put that Jamboard away for a second. Uh, and I wonder if I can do this. I'm just going to stop presenting that screen. I'm going to start presenting my whole screen. And let's see if I can show you how this works. This always gets a little bit Doctor Who because um, you're going to see a screen inside a screen inside a screen. Oh, hold on. What's going on? Do I have to do something different? Oh, no, there you go. That's good. Okay, hopefully you can see my screen. But you're getting that sort of Doctor Who effect because that's just when I'm presenting my screen, which is presenting my screen, that's just unfortunately something that happens. But what I want to show you is this stuff that's happening over in the top corner here. So as um, as the uh, the owner of this room um, is called, when I click on that activities button on the side there, you'll see I get the option to do breakout rooms, polls, Q and A's, the recording, and the whiteboarding. So the whiteboarding is the the Jamboard I showed you earlier. The recording, we're obviously doing that right now. The Q and A. If you click on the Q&A, and I think I've made the Q&A available. Yes, I have. Um, if you would all like to just jump into the Q&A for a second, and there's a button down the bottom there that says ask a question. If you'd just like to ask a question, you can make it a sensible question or a silly question. It doesn't really matter. We're just doing it for a demonstration. Uh, but pop on that ask a question button and just add something in there because I'd like to just show you how this works. <clears throat> And I'm assuming someone's typing something. There you go. Cheryl says, has the storm hit me one? Karen says, what's the capital of Burkina Faso? And does Jamboard come for free with Plus? Um, yeah, so Michael, in answer to your question, first of all, uh, yes, Jamboard does come with Plus. Uh, sorry, uh, comes for free. So it's in the fundamentals version. You know, uh, Jamboard does work in the fundamentals version. Um, now, the thing is, when if you're seeing me, my background here, I can actually uh, say, I've answered uh, Michael's question now, so I can just tick it and indicate that that's now answered. Um, you might see a question here that thinks a great question. So maybe Cheryl's question is an excellent question and you can upvote it. I can see someone's already done that. So you can upvote a question. When you upvote a question, I can see which questions are the most popular ones. And so having that sort of live Q&A happening in the background that's a nice little feature to have. I can order this by the questions that are the most popular. So it'll put the, the one with three votes at the top, the one with one vote under that, the one with no votes under that. So I can order them that way. I can also order them by the oldest or the newest. I can see all the questions, just the answered questions, just the unanswered questions. 
So if you're doing a meeting, so for example, you're using Meet for something like, I don't know, a parent meeting or a, you know, a staff meeting, uh, you could get people putting their questions into that uh, Q&A pod um, and deal with the questions in a really uh, orderly manner. So that's the Q&A pod. Then you've got what we call the, um, the polls pod. So I can come in here and start a poll. Now you're seeing my screen, so you're seeing what's happening in the background. Hello, Bettina's little boy. So I could ask a question. I could say, um, uh, have you used Meet before, right? So I could even spell it correctly in that. And I could have my answers here. So I could say yes, I could say no. Um, and I could even add more options if I want. Uh, so let's let's launch that. I'll, I'll save save that question, and I'll launch it now. And I will. And so if you go into the uh, poll pod by going into the uh, little activities button down the bottom here, and then opening the poll, uh, I can see that four people have voted. And what I'm not doing right now is I'm not showing you the results in. I mean, you're seeing the results because you're seeing my screen but you're not seeing the results at your end. So what I can do when I'm ready, so I see 11 people have said yes, so one person said no, um, I could say over here, well, when I'm ready to show you the results, I click that little switch, and now hopefully you're seeing the results at your end as well. The little uh, scale has come up. Um, if I wanted to make anonymous, I could actually turn on, oh, no, I didn't make this an anonymous quiz. Um, but you can, you can have anonymous versions of this as well. And when I'm ready, and I don't want you to be interacting with this anymore, I end the poll and that now goes away and locks it down. So that's um, that's an example of the polling you can do inside Meet. Uh, again, one of the plus features. And then let's just come out here and let's try the breakout room. So we've got currently, we've got 19 people in this call. <coughs> I am going to go to the breakout room tab here and show you how you set this up. So right, here's everyone that's in the call. And I might just set up my breakout rooms by clicking this little button at the top here and saying, okay, I have 19 people. Let's just say we put them into uh, five rooms. That gives us roughly four people per room. Poor old Michael's there on his own. I'm gonna move Michael up into this one. Uh, there like that, and let's not worry about that fifth room. Okay, so I've just shift shuffled people around. If there was someone in here I particularly wanted in a room, so maybe I wanted Karen in this room, not that room, so I could move people around. I can shuffle people into wherever they need to be. And when I'm ready, or I can do a manual shuffle here, I can put a timer on this because I want to end the breakouts after, I'm just going to do it after one minute. So I'll say OK. All right, now when I hit this open rooms button, what's going to happen is everyone's going to get dispersed into their breakout rooms. I will lead you to chat with each other for one minute. You can just introduce yourself, say hi, talk about where you're from. Uh, and then after one minute, because I've set the timer, it will automatically bring you back into the main room. So ready? Here we go. Hi hitting hyperspace. All right, well, hopefully, uh, hopefully that worked okay for everybody and flung you off into the room. And I, I just asked Camille a question and he was just about to answer it and it <laughs> flung us back into this room again. So my apologies for that, Camille. Um, but that's how breakout rooms work. So uh, pretty easy to set up. Um, 
as you saw, they were more or less randomly assigned then, but you can you can specifically assign people in a room. And if you want to set up the breakout rooms in advance and put specific people in specific rooms and pre-plan it, you can actually do that through Google Calendar as well. So you can plan, plan things in advance to all the people who are going to be in the room. Um, I'm just going to pause there to see if there are any questions. <laughs> Thanks, Camille. Uh, would anyone, anyone feel free to either pop it into the chat if you have a question about anything so far or, or feel free to unmute your microphone. Just bear in mind that you, if your camera is on, you may appear in the final recorded video. If anyone has any questions. And it looks like we do not have questions. So I'm just gonna go back to sharing those slides again. Are we going for time? We have about six minutes. Okay. So uh, there are my slides again. So we talked about the Q and A. We talked about the large meetings up to five hundred and plus. Um, oh, the live streaming. Sometimes you want to do a meeting that's larger than five hundred. So you might want to have a school assembly, or you might be a multi-campus school, or you might want to do a uh, you know, broadcast of a school event, like a I don't know, an open day or a school production or something. Um, with the Plus Edition, you can actually live stream directly to YouTube, uh, and you also can use all of those features that you get in uh, in the regular meet call, so the Q&A, the chat, the, 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 the polls and so on. Um, you also have the ability to use those in the live stream as well to YouTube. Uh, with the Plus Edition, you can be live streaming up to 100,000 viewers across multiple uh, workspace domains. and also outside your school community as well. So basically you can live stream directly to YouTube as, a, as a, uh, an open live stream. Um, the transcripts, uh, if you turn that on, uh, you will get a transcript at the end of the call. So I mentioned before we're recording this call, you'll get a recording of the call. You'll also get a transcript of the call as well, which is um, everything that got said and it's obviously a lot easier to find something in a transcript than it is to have to scroll through an hour's worth of video. So um, that's a nice thing. Now, um, Richard says, what kind of interaction can occur in a breakout room? Oh, sorry, Michael says, what kind of interaction can occur in a breakout room? Anything you can do in a meet call, Michael, you can do in a breakout room. So if you want to go into a, into a breakout and run a poll or do the chat or share a screen, all the stuff that you can normally do inside a meet, you can do inside a breakout room. Um, Richard says we have issues with Apple Macs and screen sharing. Mate. If you want to go to privacy, you have to rejoin the meet. Uh, I have not heard that question before, um, but I'm more than happy to try and look into it for you. So um, maybe Richard, maybe we can take that offline after the meeting and I can try and get one of our tech guys to come and give you a, a sensible answer. Um, and Bettina, you had your hand up. It was just to let you know that there was questions in the uh, chat. Awesome, no worries, thank you. Uh, <clears throat> the live translated captions, this one's hard to demonstrate, but um, if you're in a call with someone who speaks another language, now right now we only do English, Spanish, Portuguese, French and German, but we're looking to expand it into lots of other languages as well. In the plus edition of Meet, you have the ability to do translated captions. So once you turn on that language, so let's say I'm here speaking English and I'm speaking to someone who speaks French right, over a video call. I can set this up so I speak in English, they see my words appearing as a closed caption in French. They respond in French and I see their closed captions coming up in English. So it's actually doing the live translations for me on the fly. Like I said, only the five languages at the moment, but hoping to expand into a whole lot more languages very soon. Um, and that is literally very much the uh, the Babel fish for those who remember Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. Um, just before we finish up in the next couple of minutes, just a couple of examples of where you might use Meet. Uh, I think, um, you know, a couple of years ago, a lot of us tried video calling for the first time. Um, and, and now it seems like it's just a regular thing we do. You know, video calls just seem so normal now. Um, but a couple of years ago, they weren't normal to a lot of people. However, there's lots of ways you can use video conferencing, video calling within a school situation that have nothing to do with distance learning. So, for example, things like students who are sick at home or having bringing in virtual guest speakers. 
uh, connecting with educators in other parts of the world um, and bringing in expertise outside of your school, having uh, office hours or communicating with parents, parent-teacher conferences, virtual meetings with parents. Um, a lot of schools tried doing virtual parent-teacher night over video calling uh, in the midst of the pandemic and have decided that that's actually a pretty good way to do parent-teacher nights. And a lot of them are continuing to do that now, uh, which is interesting. But school board meetings, staff meetings, employee interviews. I was on an interview panel recently. We did it all over a, a meet call. Um, so uh, particularly if you're looking to employ someone who's perhaps not from the local area and you want to sort of, you know, get the interview or at least stage one of the interview done uh, remotely. So tons of examples of how you might do that. So connecting with parents from anywhere um, is, is one example. You know, send the Meet link. Again, the nice thing about Meet is it runs entirely in the browser, so there's no software to install. They don't need to be using a particular type of computer or a particular operating system. As long as they have a browser, it just works. Nothing to install. Um, uh, professional development, bringing in teachers from other parts of the world, uh, using breakout rooms, doing the small group participations, the Q and A feature to do the questions and answers, um, having people collaborate in real time across time and space. Uh, I know schools that are using this now where they're offering subjects to students um, where the school itself doesn't have the uh, expertise to offer a particular subject, but collectively three or four schools within a local area have enough students to make it worthwhile. And one of those schools does have a teacher with expertise. So they're running virtual classes now and, and schools are starting to open up what they can offer the students because of this. Um, recording professional development sessions so that they can be replayed later. So tons of uses here, um, uh, allowing students to collaborate on group projects outside of class time. Um, uh, virtual field trips, career days, flexibility of um, travel barriers. So things that we might not always think about as being a use for remote sort of video calling, uh, but actually fit really well into just a regular school day that have nothing to do with pandemics. Um, so removing travel barriers, guest speakers, live translated captions, um, dealing with students in other parts of the world that maybe speak a different language to you and still being able to do it thanks to the translations. So that's just some of the things that Meet can do. Uh, hopefully, I've given you a little bit of a snapshot today into not just Meet generally, the, the fundamentals edition, but also specifically the plus features, which uh, many of you now have. Uh, and hopefully, you take advantage of those. Um, if you'd like to know more about it, um, get in touch with your Google contact person, and that can be either through me or through Bettina. Um, and uh, there's lots of resources online as well. I can make these slides available to everyone uh, afterwards if you'd like. I will, um, uh, I have everyone's email address, so I will just send a copy, a link out to the slides in case you'd like a copy, uh, along with a link to the recording. And ladies and gentlemen, with that, I will uh, wrap things up. If anyone has any last minute questions, now is your chance. I think we are good. All right, and with that, I will say goodbye to everyone and um, I'll stop the recording. Don't forget we have uh, another session next week to talk about the uh, security stuff, another session after that to talk about the Google Classroom stuff, uh, and, and two more sessions after that. But you've got the website, so you should know what's coming up. Um, I'll stop the recording. I will hang around for a couple of minutes just in case anyone wants to ask any further questions once I stop the recording.